Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash Patchwork Heart Ministry today. The St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, in partnership with Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network, presents a podcast for families in crisis. Hello and welcome to this podcast from the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. This is our podcast for families in crisis. And it's so great to be here with you on this evening. And I am blessed because I am joined by a recurring uh, co-host with me on this show, Nancy Carlin, coming to us from Florida. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Yes, so glad. And although this podcast this evening is for families in crisis, we decided to make our topic this month uh, as a topic to really delve into Advent, what it means, how we can grow closer to God, and also just the focus on what's coming, because it is a time of waiting, and it is a time of preparation. So I thought we could start out with, Nancy, with some points that you and I had discussed before we started this podcast. And one of the questions that we were discussing here was, what condition are our hearts? And an example would be, do we open or close our hearts to God and why? What's holding us back? Thought you could speak on that. It's kind of one of those things where you think, of course, I'm open to God. But then again, who's your priority? Where are you focusing your time? And really, I can remember being so busy, even when I was trying to focus on God and going to many of the services over Advent, I used to go on a retreat for Advent. Um, my first thought was not of God. It would be of the Christmas tree and the cookies and presents. So not that that's horrible, but possibly it was re withholding my um, admiration and my anticipation and a possibility to grow in my love for our Lord during Advent, when there's so many things that we could apply to our lives. So what was holding me back? Maybe you can relate to this. I just was focusing on what was going on in the world. And I thought that's what Advent might be about. Not really recognizing that there's so much history, keeping watch, praying, Going to, uh, going to confession, and then other things like penance, um, giving alms, and also fasting. And so I'm finding that fasting has been a new thing for me. Not good for everyone, but you, there's many things we can fast from besides food. And fasting helps us, gives us more time gives us an opportunity to think more about God and not focus on food. And then what I'm finding is since I'm my, uh, when I'm having a simple meals, like just bread and water some, some days, I have a little extra money to give and I focus on keeping that money aside and putting it in the collection basket or putting it in for well, this week it was Thanksgiving meals, but in the Advent season for Christmas meals. So those are the things. So what is holding us back? I think we have to ask the Holy Spirit to show us what's holding us back. Just like when we examine our conscience for a um, time with our Lord and reconciliation, when we go in to talk to our Lord, when we want to receive the grace that we can receive when we make a good confession. So we have to look at the, what the Holy Spirit is going to show us in our hearts. So are our hearts closed or open? And that doesn't happen by accident unless God moves in us without our asking, which at times he may, but we have to still consent to it. 
So we ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts now at this moment and show us what is holding us back from you, Lord. And we ask that you remove it. Remove what's holding us back, what's holding us back from opening our hearts to you. We want to open the door, Lord. We ask Mother Mary to help us open our hearts just like she did. Yeah, it's always good to focus on Mary. And, you know, we're the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation, and we are born from the Mercedarian religious order. And we're always focused on Our Lady of Mercy. And there's such a, a beauty there and such an acceptance by our Lord and Our Lady because they're always praying for us, no matter what. And, you know, this hasn't been an easy year for a lot of people. And so I know true. you understand that, Nancy, too. And, and that's why I think this Advent is the perfect time to stop ourselves and say, what is really important? Because we can lose everything, but most importantly, we don't want to lose our faith. That Correct. is so true. Yes. And we're removed. And many of us aren't able to attend mass. We're removed from our families. We're removed from many of the things that we value so much in our faith and in our kind of secular roles, uh, work even. So what possibly can we want if it's not interacting with our families at the holidays and, and sharing with them and giving to them? What, what does our heart want? And of course, we want to be in week one. I'm just going to mention um, there's prayers that are part of many Advent uh, retreats. And week one would have a theme, the four weeks of Advent and week two. So just looking at week one, we can stir up, stir up the power of God in us. We can ask him to come and save us from our sins. And then the response would be, oh, come, Emmanuel. So when we think about why we are not open to God and making a place for him in our hearts, it has a lot to do with what's going on in our environments. And sometimes this environment that we're dealing with now is so discouraging and disheartening. We're just not able to do our normal festivities and even our normal penances and prayers. We're not able to come up with some new ideas. Well, in our church, in the Catholic Church, there are so many wonderful places to go with worship, even if you're on the phone with someone. And I, I invite you to think of that. Think of what it might be to partner with someone who doesn't want to forget their true identity, which is adopted sons and daughters of our Lord Jesus Christ, made in his image. And our true home is in heaven. And if we can keep our eyes on Jesus, then we're going to be able to walk through this and he will help us open our hearts and Mother Mary will too. It's a very special time because this is a, this is a time where a lot of grace is going to be bestowed on us when there's a lot of sin, which I think we'd be blind if we didn't see it. Um, and when it, many of us do you know, want to see the best in others, but there's a lot of sin right now. And so God is just waiting for us, wanting us to say, come into our hearts, Lord, stir up our love for you, not with my power, but with your power, Lord. So first and foremost, we're Christians and we want the truth. We would love truth. God is truth. We want love, mercy, and justice. And there's a balance there where we can um, be at peace with that instead of what the world tends to offer us, which is pride, stubbornness, and that turns into hate. And if we're stuck there, which some of us may be, we need others to help us. We need others to help us pray. So reach out if you find that you're feeling in your heart a feeling of hate, a feeling of uh, maybe rebellion even from what is going on. Remember, when we're Christians, we recognize that all things are within God's power and within his mercy. And some of the things that we have to go through don't look very merciful, but he has a big plan in mind. He is in charge. He, he created this universe. He won't let things go to a place where you're not able to cope. He is going to help us through whatever we have to go through. 
I have a little story that um, I thought was pretty interesting. It just, it's about um, what St. Peter says to our Lord. He says to our Lord, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus replies, now we may not have read this in our own Bibles, but our translations can change things. So our Lord said to St. Peter, blessed are you, Simon, Beriona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the Father has revealed it. So what, where, what is that saying about us? It's saying that Bar Jonah is really the son of the dove, son of the dove. So we're asking to be sons of the dove. That means we want to re get this grace that St. Peter got. Why not? We want the grace of the Holy Spirit. And he earned his name at that moment that he became the son of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit descended on the, all the uh, apostles and Mother Mary, when they were praying and remember they were waiting they were waiting in the upper room for the holy spirit to come and this is another time of waiting very similar in that we are waiting for the holy spirit to renew us but also for the great incarnation of the god of the universe the creator of the universe god made man and that is just beyond we can just meditate on that watch and listen and pray read scripture and see what's holding you back if you haven't opened your heart is it because you don't know god maybe you don't trust god maybe i need more help to explain how i moved from um, mediocre to on fire but we have so many things to look at so what should we do maybe we should backtrack to what is advent yeah that would be perfect and i'm also looking through some of the notes that you and I have here that uh, backing track to Advent, we can also look at those dates and feasts. And I pulled up some of those as well so that we can meditate. Uh, so maybe if it's okay, I'll, I'll list some of those and we can discuss them. Absolutely. Yeah. So the first one that I have is uh, St. Nicholas Day. And that falls on and is celebrated on December 6th. And he was a Turkish cardinal in the fourth century who was known for his kindness to children and helping those in need. His feast day, as I said, celebrated December 6th. He was renowned for secretly giving gifts and placing coins in the shoes of the needy. So isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. And it just shows something small like that, but done with love and to honor God can move hearts. It's amazing. And in addition, I think it's also a good feast to celebrate with little children and with your families. I know that when my daughters were little, we used to take their shoes and we would put them outside of their bedroom door and there would be little somethings inside <laughs> in the morning. Um, but it, it's a way to remember St. Nicholas and it's a way to celebrate Advent. So I'm sure that some people who are listening uh, are maybe recollecting on that and maybe you've heard of it before and also i want to backtrack that i know that this, this podcast is for families in crisis so we're offering these things to you too that if your family is in crisis if you're uh, maybe a family affected by divorce because that's also part of our ministry is that these ideas and these um, suggestions that we're giving are ways that you can stay close to god during this time and there are small ways, really, if you think about it. Little prayers that we can do and reflecting on, on saints such as St. Nicholas. Um, moving on is the Immaculate Conception, which is a huge feast for the church on December 8th. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception celebrates the solemn belief in the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is universally celebrated on December 8th, nine months before the Feast of the Nativity of Mary, which is celebrated on September 8th. It's one of the most important Marian feasts in the liturgical calendar of the Roman Catholic Church, celebrated worldwide. It is the, 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 the patronal feast of the United States. So I know that many of my friends and acquaintances love this feast, and I do too. And for some, it's their favorite feast day. 
It's beautiful. Our, our mother Mary, without her, we wouldn't have Jesus. And uh, Jesus as uh, the redeemer, it was a dark world that he came into and he brought the light. Mother Mary is also a light. So those, those are things we can remember is that we are little lights as well. And in this time to focus on some of the positive things, repentance and prayer and recognizing our sin and, and going to confession, um, but also remembering how without Mother Mary, this whole life that we're able to lead, sharing our lives with our Lord, sharing our lives with Mary, all the communion of saints and each other is amazing and beautiful. And when we pray through Advent, watching and waiting, keeping watch, we can remember some of the stories in the Bible as well. So those are things that we can read and we can look up. Like everybody's heard of the Jesse tree, I think. And I yes. have always wanted to do one of those. So maybe this is the year I can do one. I wonder what Jesse, who is Jesse? And I guess now that I've looked it up, he's the father of King David. And that's the lineage for our Lord Jesus Christ, which was foretold in the Old Testament. So just looking up something like that, seeing if you can order it. They're usually, a lot of times, they're just free ornaments that you can print out or design your own from there. And there's usually some type of meditation or quick um, prayer, one sentence prayer for each of those days of the Jesse tree, which goes through the Christmas season. So it helps us to prepare for Christmas, but in a, in a bigger way than just wrapping presents and in a deeper way because giving is important, but also receiving. And that's part of what our hearts need to be ready for. What's the condition of our hearts? Are you ready? Am I ready to receive the birth of our Lord in my heart? Which he's the one that's going to change me. He's the one with Mother Mary, who's revealed as the queen of heaven and earth at her crowning. She, she lived a hidden life too. So I don't know if your life is as hidden as mine, but I think many of us now feel like we have very hidden, quiet lives, maybe doing a lot of mundane things rather than getting out in the world and maybe collecting and, and sharing and, and making so much of a, um, a festive time with the holiday coming up with our, with our Lord right around the corner being our Savior, our Redeemer, the light of the world. We're going to be possibly like Mother Mary, hidden and lonely, hidden and lowly as well, who ponders and serves others. And how can we serve others? We can serve them quietly. I think we can serve them in prayer and by teaching and learning um, when in our conversations if they allow us. Oh, I wanted beautiful. to, yeah, I wanted to share that because. I remember one of my friends and family members over the years, many family members actually, thought that I had such a mundane life being a mother of five children, all the diapers and things. And, and honestly, when you do things with love uh, and unite them to things, the, the beautiful saints that le le did small things, and especially Mother Mary, I think we can disarm our Lord a little bit with the love that we give, little tiny bits of love, but on a daily basis and everything that we're doing. And maybe that's something you can reestablish in your heart. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. That was beautiful. Um, I thought I'd also read through a couple other of these saints that are happening, uh, feast days that are happening in December. Uh, another one is St. Lucy. And Lucia of Syracuse, also known as St. Lucy or St. Lucia was a young Christian martyr. Her feast day, known as St. Lucy's Day, is celebrated on December 13th. Now, I'm getting this also from stpats.org, so I thank them for this information. Um, and also, Lucy, whose name means light or lucid, is the patron saint of the blind and those with eye trouble. Uh, falling within the Advent season, St. Lucy's Day is viewed as an event signaling the arrival of Christmastide pointing to the arrival of the light of Christ. That's also uh, wonderful to read because uh, I, I'm interested also in the fact that she's the patron saint of eyesight. And so if you're listening to this, 
and you know someone who has eye trouble, she's the one you want to intercede to. I love that. That is wonderful. And then, of course, we just mentioned that our Lord is the light of the world. So we can also find the deeper meanings in Lucy when we pray to her, if she can open the eyes of our heart mm. hey, as that's well as of our beautiful. vision. And again, her feast day is December 13th. And I just have one more, and this is an important one, is Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I think we need her more than ever right now. Her feast day is uh, December 9th, 1531. Excuse me, that's incorrect. That was a, a, another date. Her feast day is actually December 12th. So that is the correct one. She appeared to a simple Aztec Indian who had converted to the Catholic faith. And that was the date, December 9th, when she appeared. Uh, to Juan Diego, three days later, Mary provided a sign so the local bishop would believe she had appeared. Roses grew out of the cold winter soil, and when Juan Diego opened his cloak to show the bishop what he had gathered, an image of Our Lady appeared on the fabric, the miraculous image of a woman clothed with the sun. The sun that she wears is the light of Christ who gives light and life to all. December 12th is the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the Americas and unborn children. Many Hispanic countries have a celebration leading up to December 12th, Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And what I was confusing there was December 9th. It said it, that was when the Aztec Indian uh, converted to the Catholic faith. So and on that's Saint a very, Diego, yes, St. Juan, Juan Diego. Diego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my parish when I'm uh, up in Portland, Oregon, is St. Juan Diego. And it, it's beautiful. They have a wonderful statue of him kneeling with his um, roses all in the cape and the um, in, and they'll, there'll be fresh roses in there. Sometimes people bring fresh roses. And that, there's so many things that you brought up with the different saints. And one of the things is that when our hearts are open to God, he can work some small miracles in us and help us to discover what our gifts are. So I think the saints were able to unite themselves with this will of God, recognizing who they were, and what gifts God wanted them to give, and because he gave them those gifts. So I think one of the things, if we go back to the idea of recognizing what our identity is, which we, we stated that we're the image of God here on earth, we're his hands, but also your personal gifts. And I can remember talking to someone, she was in her 70s, and she really didn't know who she was. She was a little lost and had never really identified these wonderful talents that God had given her. And I'm hoping that we can take some time in, in all of us while we're watching and waiting. And we can ask the Holy Spirit, what gifts has God given me? Show me the gifts that God has given me so I can share them. And that is recognizing who you are becomes a gift to others. So if you're good at listening, you can offer time to listen. If you're good at um, being supportive to those that are in trouble, then you can provide support, listening, and being with those that are having trouble. And if you're not, you can pray for them. You can give them some ideas about how they've been so brave or how they've been uh, a part of this family, whether it's up or down time for them, whether it's um, there's hopelessness in their hearts. We're all here together. And knowledge is another. Some of us have the gift of knowledge, gifts of wisdom. What are your gifts? And when we have knowledge, that means we're being fed. You don't, you don't get knowledge without attempting it. I mean, there are some people that have innate knowledge, but on the whole, we have to give it some effort. We have to read. We have to pray. And when we're being fed, we grow. And then when we have this growth, the seed of faith that we get when we're baptized, it can help us be transformed and into this new identity because we're adopted into the divine heart, into the interior of the divine heart. But we can invite him into our heart too. So when we're having uh, times when we're um, let's say we are feeling down. It's a, a low point for us. Maybe there's hopelessness. Instead of thinking that it's a 
horrible thing. Instead, open your heart to the Lord. He felt hopeless and invite him into your heart and say, Lord, I feel hopeless and I'm inviting you to share in my hopelessness. And then this suffering becomes redemptive. I had, uh, I've been in adopting a practice when my emotions are, um, and I'm having a hard time seeing clearly the beauty of our Lord or the beauty of our world, I open my heart to our Lord and I make a bed in there for him. I make a bed, the bottom part is patience and the blanket is of love. And I just invite him to every emotion, every feeling, every discovery. Um, mostly I invite him in when I'm having a hard time with something, disappointments. And I've, I've been finding that there's a lot of growth in that. He's giving me a new insight into these ups and downs in our world. And instead of hopelessness, instead of impatience, because we want this fixed, we are ending up in a prayer that can blind Satan even. You know, Mother Mary is the conqueror of the evil in this world. So we can deflect some of this evil by inviting God into our hearts when we're recognizing it and, and responding to it and asking him, to lift up our soul, which is actually the first offertory for the first Sunday of Advent. Unto you, O Lord, have I lifted up my soul. And then it goes on to end with, let me not be put to shame. Because we don't want it because we want our egos to be fed. We want God to have the glory. So as we move through some of these emotions and these ups and downs this year, especially during the Advent season, we can open our hearts to actually have our Lord share in our Advent instead of us looking out to him, bring him into our hearts. So our hearts aren't empty anymore if we invite God into our hearts. And the condition can be rather beautiful, even in times when it feels hopeless or disappointment. And that's part of what I wanted to mention was just that when we pray and we recognize in the Beatitudes that blessed are the poor in spirit, um, I think that's what that might mean in some regards. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing because I know that you have a deep prayer life. So a lot of what you share with us are things that you've learned along your life journey. And that life journey is always played out moment by moment every day of your life. So one reason why the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation has invited you to be a part of this podcast is because it is for families in crisis. And I know that you yourself have experienced that too. So when you speak about these things, they also speak to those people who are listening, who are wanting to grow, wanting to know that God cares and wanting to get some kind of spiritual uh, consultation from all of this. So thank you so much. Um, I thought we could go on to the next part of what we, you and I had discussed was to uh, praying through Advent and choosing like three or four theme themes. An example would be to a prayer to the Holy Spirit through the eyes of Mary, uh, of the poor or the hopeless, of the Magi. Talk about that. Right. We have so many opportunities because there is so much in Advent. Anticipation for the Lord's coming, um, the Savior, the redemption, was old. I mean, from way back when we are looking at the beginning of the relationship that God established, the covenant with his people, his chosen people in the Old Testament. They were waiting a long time. They were keeping watch. So what helps me is to zero in on a few things so I can learn something and establish a new interaction with our Lord to invite him in more and more. And I love the idea of praying through the eyes of Mary. She brought me back to our Catholic faith when I had left for a while. And her prayers, we can look up many different prayers about how she addresses or um, lives in her humility and her piety and her beauty. Her, so one of the things is to read different nativity scenes or different annunciation uh, scenes. And that has been beautiful to me. I have one here. I think we have time for it. It's just several sentences. Mm -hmm. So the nativity. 
in order not to scare the creature or the creatures, the creator becomes a small child. I am born, he tells us, in the darkness of your night to illuminate you in the cold, which your heart reserved for me to warm you, in the poverty of your misery to enrich in you. I just love that because it just lets us know that poverty, the poorness of our hearts, it's not on purpose. It is our condition. And he knew that, the Lord knew that when we left, when we turned our backs, as Adam and Eve turned our backs, turned us away from our Lord so that we'd function without his immediate uh, attention. He was with them at all times. Now we're functioning on our own will, and we need to turn back to him. He recognizes that we're in a place that is dark. It, his light needs to come into it. So it, it goes on to say, I do not come to harm you, but to take away your evils and that which renders you unhappy. And I bet you might guess what might be rendering us unhappy. It's our ungrateful will. As a little beggar, I ask you to give it to me, if you please. So he wants us to give us, give him, give over our will to him so that we can be part of his will, which was our original condition. So that was a beautiful scene that kind of spoke of the baby Jesus at the nativity scene. And what he's asking us as a little small child with his arms reaching out to us to come and be part of his kingdom his kingdom as in the Our Father. So when we pray the Our Father, we might think back, well, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, Jesus is offering us his kingdom and all that's inherited by it. But we do have to, there's a commitment there, and it is to live in and do his will. And that's hard to do without actually surrendering it to him. And I often uh, recognize that I'm not able to do it. I have to ask Mother Mary to do it for me. And so when we're disappointed even, when we're mostly um, finding that things aren't going the way we had hoped, we can look back and recognize that we really don't know the big picture, but Jesus does. And in that, in our watchfulness and our alertness, we stop from focusing on what we want and we accept what we have. I used to say something at work. People would say, oh, my goodness, aren't you going to heat up your dinner? And I would look up and have a big smile and say, no, I have to learn to love the life I have. Because being a mother of five children, I rarely had a warm meal. So by the time you'd sit down, your meal was cold. So from loving God and giving him our lives and letting him shine the dark, in our darkness, we also learn to accept what, the life that we have. It may not be the life that we dreamed of, and it may not be the Christmas that we dreamed of or the Advent, but when we get to know ourselves, we can accept our gifts and our limitations and recognize that really what's important is our relationship with God, and Jesus can help us, and so can Mary. I have a small quote from St. Sure. Ignatius. It's St. Saint, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and I'm quoting him. It says, For it is not knowing much but realizing and relishing things interiorly that contents and satisfies the soul. So I think mm. Advent's a time that we can really um, not pressure ourselves to memorize things, but to actually look at what the church has to offer and then relish all these things. It just goes on and on how many beautiful things God has offered us in so many ways in prayers and in um, reading the Bible. In music, we haven't even touched on music. So we can find and be fed uh, in simple, small ways. But something, when we wanna grow, something has to die, just like with seeds and plants. You plant, you, let's say you want some nourishment. So you, you have some pull some carrots out of the ground. You might have some lettuce that you cut and make a salad. Those plants have to die to feed you. And for you to grow, 
you are actually having to die to some of the things that you may have wanted. And with God's help, you can grow. And this seed is transformed and you become a new creation. And God has an opportunity here to let us grow in, in the Advent Reflections. Yes, thank you so much. I know you put a lot of thought and prayer into some of these meditations and it is helping many people who are listening because that's what this podcast is all about. As I said, although for families in crisis, uh, these things are for you to ponder and take with you. So listen to this podcast again because there's a lot of uh, very, very good wisdom here from Nancy on this beautiful season of Advent. Um, another section that we were talking about, which we wanted to discuss is, is our heart em empty? And that's when we can reflect on the O antiphons. And I thought I could read some of them, or maybe just read all of them for that matter, and we can discuss them too. So these are the, at, the antiphons for Advent Vespers. So the first one on December 17th is O Wisdom coming forth from the mouth of the Most High, reaching from one end to the other, mightily and sweetly ordering all things, come and teach us the way of prudence. So that's the very first one. I'll just read a couple, but then we can read through all of the antiphons. December 18th is, O Adonai and leader of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush and gave him the law of Sinai, come and redeem us with an outstretched arm. And I'll just read through the rest of the O antiphons, maybe not giving all the full descriptions, uh, but you can look those up, please do. December 19th would be O Root of Jesse, December 20th, O Key of David, December 21st, O Morning Star, December 22nd, O King of the Nations, and December 23rd, O Emmanuel. Isn't that beautiful? That is, to me, one of the things I was kind of surprised about. I had uh, learned about these O Antiphons later in my uh, return back to the faith. And these are so ancient, which is so amazing to me, what we have in our Catholic faith. So who wouldn't love to have some wisdom and, and pray for it? And um, let's just say I like to have some visual images. Maybe that would be a picture of the Holy Bible to help me remember the first antiphon when I'm thinking throughout the day. I read it once, and then I think, oh, right, the Bible is such, has such wisdom in it. It's the living word of our Lord. And that would be the first day of that last week. The old antiphons are sung that last week before Christmas, week four of Advent. And then the O Adonai, just different words and different ways that we can refer to our Lord. And um, I might think of that since it is about the burning bush, just the flames of uh, the Lord in many ways that he communicates with, with us and shares with us. And uh, the flames that came as the Holy Spirit. So there's communication and that means to listen and to watch and ponder, just like Mother Mary. And I love the Odenai, uh, the um, antiphon, I mean, of the 19th, which is O Root of Jesse. That's one of the things I mentioned. I always wanted to um, build a, a Jesse tree, which can be a very fun kind of craft even. But even to recognize that this Jesse, who is it? So look in the Bible and we realize it's King David's father. And the lineage of our Lord is so important. So what's our lineage? We have a great lineage because we are adopted sons and daughters of our Lord. And if we can maintain a recognition of that importance of how much we're cherished, that helps us uh, in our ups and downs. And the 20th after O Root of Jesse is O Key of David. And I don't know much about the key of David except for the picture often of um, a lily. I think that would refer to Mother Mary. Yes. She is known as the lily. Mm -hmm. And she is, um, who, who could be, with, once we start getting the names of Mary, there's thousands of them. 
it starts awakening us to how much she's doing for us and has done for us and is there for us. And if our mothers haven't been what our mothers need to be uh, for us, we can ask Mother Mary to fill that in. And I've even said this to my adult children. I know at times I wasn't the mother you needed or wanted, but we can pray to Mother Mary and ask her to help fill that role. And even now as we're trying to find uh, the Son of God, she knows who he is and how to live with him. And uh, we could ask to do the same. And the 21st, well, we did the O key of David, then the um, O morning star. So O key of David is uh, the king of all nations. And often that refers to God, our Lord Jesus Christ, as king of all nations. When we realize that governments aren't the answer, but that Christ is. And just not to move too quickly, but the next one is O morning star. So as our Lord comes into our hearts, it's the rising sun. That's what they're referring to in the morning star. King of all nations is a throne, O king. We would have a throne there, maybe possibly as an image. Is he enthroned in our hearts? Is he enthroned in our homes? Maybe it's a time to get an enthronement, the sacred heart of mm. Jesus. That's good. Also, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, just some ideas, and then not to give you more work, but since the holidays might be a little bit sparse this year, think of a couple of things. Maybe you would like to honor, um, oh, Emmanuel, God among us is the Holy Eucharist. And if you haven't been able to receive See if there's an opportunity in churches nearby if you make an appointment. So I'm not sure what you have. We, we do have um, masses here, and I have been able to go to confession and receive Holy Communion. So we need to take a minute and decide, this is going to be a very fruitful time for me if I just give myself a moment and focus on a few themes yeah, I think what you're saying, it goes back to the initial statement of what we said, is our hearts empty? And then going on to say that knowledge being fed and the answer it comes is growth, the seed of faith, of baptism and being transformed, but by whom? And that's where we go to the Lord and say, you know what, you're the one who's transforming me, not myself, uh, because the, our heart's interior condition where we are invited by God or we, our hearts can be cold. So that's another examination of conscience, right? Oh, so true. There, and I think that's a really good point is the examination of conscience. I don't know if you wanted to focus on that for a minute, but I think it would be worthwhile. I, I looked up one. Um, the one I have is specific to a, um, a group that I belong to, a prayer group. This one is from St. Paul Evangelization Institute. And I think it's so worth it to get a copy of one and, and ask the Holy Spirit to sit with you while you just read some of these questions. Um, they don't necessarily list the Ten Commandments, but we have to regard our, our inner life as part of what we're doing exteriorly too. Because if we are thinking it, then it can become our actions. So we have to be watchful, but not only watchful for the Lord, but watchful in ourselves. And that might be a choice on one of those three things. Have we been watchful and alert enough to, from when we do this examination of conscience, to make one change, an effort moving towards um, a better way of life instead of sin, uh, virtue. So let's just look at the first one. Is there anything in my life I have prioritized above God? Well, I think we all do that. It's just hard to keep God first and foremost. We have to ask for help when we want to put God first. And it takes a very um, consistent effort. But those changes can become more and more where we are looking at what we decide. And we're saying, oh, I didn't pray about that. I did what I wanted to do instead of asking God what he wanted me to do. Yeah, um, they're very, very good points, I think. Um, mm -hmm. 
And I would just interject also that this is the perfect time to, and, and not just Advent or Christmas, it should be all the way around. You know, when it comes to sin, uh, we can look at it as uh, just like in life, there's proactive and reactive, right? Proactive, meaning that uh, not only am I not trying my best to stay in the line of virtue and not vice, but then taking that and giving your gifts to others in whatever way you can, whether it be to give to the poor, whether it be to be a good listener, you know, that's a gift. That's a gift that not everybody has, but it's a way to be proactive against sin and in doing God's will, right? Is, um, is so being true. that type of person that not only can I say, you know, not Anne per se, Anne DeSantis, the person who's talking here, right? But anybody, um, not only did I try my best to get to confession, to be a quote, good person for Christ, but did I, was I proactive as well, right? Did I do oh, the will of God of what I was supposed to do and make a difference for others in some small way? So I would invite people to think about that as we talk about Advent and Christmas. You want to do something, quote, good for somebody else. You know, it might not be as big as you think. It could be as simple as a phone call, a text, reaching out to somebody in need, giving to the poor, helping a neighbor, um, a way to get out of yourself. So that would be a proactive way that we can be invited by God and open our hearts. Now, reactive, obviously, it's looking inside of myself and saying, what haven't I done and how can I be the person that God made me to be? Are there certain sins or things in my life that I need to lay before God and really make a, a better effort to stay with God every moment of my life and not sin, whether it be venial, mortal, whatever? So I look at it that way too, more practical, I guess, but thinking of the fact that we're going into this beautiful season of, quote, giving, right? And there's ways that we can give of ourselves and emptying ourselves. And another way is to not just, and I think a lot of us do this, we stay so much in our own brains and what we're doing wrong that we forget that God loves us and he calls us out of ourselves. So that's another way, right, that we can live Advent and live this beautiful season. And I think you brought up a, a great point. There is so much beauty, and we can counteract some of the ugliness or despair or disappointment that we are experiencing if, if we are to sharing the beauty, even sending beautiful pictures. I love opening a text and there's a picture of Mother Mary that's animated with a, a beating heart, that her beautiful, immaculate heart is aflame with love for us. Or that's just one little thing. So we can allow ourselves to recognize that at this time, it may not be what we planned or what we wanted, but it, are we standing in the way of allowing God to comfort us in our doubts and our fears. And if we are, then is that because we haven't been able to open our hearts to him? And with help, if we ask Mother Mary, she opened her heart. If we ask her, help us open our heart to our Lord like you, Mother, then she will. And we can hold on to her hand and in a childlike way recognize that we are very blessed to be children of God. And Technically, that makes us brothers of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a great brother to have. I never had one until I recognized the Lord was one. Oh, that's beautiful, honestly. And, and it brings me to one of our last points here is that uh, hopelessness, hopelessness and maybe impatience are holding us up, blinding us. And Satan can bind us, obviously. We know that. But the Lord can lift us up to truth, beauty, and goodness. And that I will give you credit, Nancy, because you, you wrote that and not I. So thank you. Uh, and that's something for us all to ponder. You know, I think when it comes down to it, some of what we're saying might seem complicated. It might seem like, wow, well, I just can't get from point A to point B very easily. 
But you know what? It all begins with something very, very simple. And that's that God loves you. And I mean, unconditionally, even, th even if you're not this perfectly pious or religious person, uh, right at this exact moment of, in your life, you know, God is not asking that of you, uh, right, right now. He just wants you to accept the love that he has for you. And when you love God perfectly, you'll step into that direction of wanting to walk with him every day, every moment. And you'll want to be enlightened in more wisdom and ways to get close to him in every way that you can proactively, reactively, and also walking with your brothers and sisters in Christ. So true and so beautiful. We're going to be counting our blessings this Advent and how great God's mercy is, our holy, beautiful God. And he can work even best when we're broken, when we recognize that we are broken. We get out of the way when we're broken, and he can do it for us. I love some of the quotes, too, if we remember some of the um, Christmas uh, carols that we sung when we were younger, like, Oh, Holy Night, oh. and Oh, Come, Oh, Come, Emmanuel. Just playing the music and really listening to, and almost praying the, the um, verses. For instance, O Holy Night was long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. What a beautiful thing to remember. Without him, it's hard to recognize how worthy we are of love and, and beauty. Amen. Amen. I agree with you completely. But you know, it starts here and now because um, God doesn't expect us to be perfect at this exact moment in time, but just to accept him and, and accept his love. As you said in one of your meditations, we open up our hearts instead of being cold, or open, opening up our hearts to allow the Holy Spirit to work within us. And then the rest will come in play, everything else, you know, you'll develop the love of prayer, the love of uh, the sacraments in a greater way. Um, and I'm saying that to you who are listening, who are a family in crisis and maybe thinking to yourselves or yourself that God isn't with you or doesn't care and nothing could be further from the truth. And that's why we're here. That's why we decided to do this podcast today to talk about Advent and Christmas and all the beauty that's coming that we can celebrate. I don't know about you, Nancy, I think you do too, but I really love Advent. I do too. I had no idea it could be so rich. And it was later in life after I had gone through so many things. So I'm glad we had a chance to share some of the beauty of Advent. And another quote um, from Matthew 22, we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. If we can just think about that, we saw his star in the east mm -hmm. and have come to worship him. Oh, come, let us adore him. And that's also in that uh, hymn. Oh, it's so beautiful. And you are a wonderful co-host with the St. Raymond and Otis Foundation here on this podcast, Nancy. Thank you so much. I know you're going to come back again because we, we value you and we value your wisdom that you helped so many people to grow during our podcast series for families in crisis. And we, as I said, we definitely invite you to come back again. Do you have any final words before we end? Uh, let's just ask God, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be with us and that he has so many fruits to give us. So open our hearts, Lord. We ask you to fill our poor hearts with your love and your beauty in your truth. And Our Lady of Guadalupe, we ask you to pray for us in our nation. Pray for us. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now before we end this podcast, I do have a couple uh, in invitations for you. One, namely, is a free conference that the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation is involved with. It's called God is Mercy and it's November 28th and 29th. So it's coming up very soon. Um, and it will be um, a free conference at smartcatholics.com backslash, a forward slash God is mercy. So do check that out. We will have 40 beautiful and wonderful Catholic speakers. 
Uh, and as I said, there is free registration. So join us again uh, next month. We, as I said, we meet the last Thursday of every month, 8 p.m. Eastern time on this YouTube channel, which is Philly Nonatus. Please like and subscribe to our channel, as well as our very good friends from Patchwork Heart Ministry, who are also airing this podcast, 8.30 Eastern, uh, every last Thursday, and Fiat Ministry Network, which is our uh, friends on Facebook, Kent Kohoski, Bill Snyder from Patchwork Heart. So God bless all of you. Have a beautiful uh, Christmas and Advent season as we're in right now, and we will see you next month. Thank you for listening to this podcast. For more information about the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, visit nonatus.org or email director.srnf at gmail.com. Are you looking for a way to deepen your prayer life and faith this Advent season? A Contemplative Las Posadas by Bill Snyder is a novena that offers reflections based on the traditional Mexican devotion that reenacts the journey of St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The ecclesiastically approved devotional is available for purchase for only $4.99 on our website, patchworkheart.org, or emailing info at patchworkheart.org.